this is my life now. Buscapan IBS relief. Anyway, welcome to the most glamorous channel on YouTube. Can't throw that away, I need them. I feel the warmth of your skin. I feel the touch of your hand. Welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you're new around these parts, my name is Missa and welcome. Please subscribe. I need to hit 50k by the end of the year or I don't get my posh meal basically from Hamish so subscribe. If you are a regular around these parts, the backdrop is up. I spent ages ironing that this morning so don't tell me you hate it but if you do hate it do tell me because it can come and go. It doesn't have to always be there. I was hoping it would help with my focus issues. So yeah. Anyway, as you can see by the title, today we're playing with Norvina Collection Volume 2. That's 4-2. This arrived um, two days ago. I tried to film with it yesterday. It was a disaster. Not because of the palette, because of me, my skills. They haven't improved clearly, but I did manage to do a look. So hence today's video. A lot of you will already know that I am on the ABH PR list, something that I am literally eternally grateful for. And so this was sent to me in PR, it was free, I did not have to pay 68 great British pounds for it. I would not have bought this if I wasn't sent it. And that's not factoring in me playing with it in my review, that's just me saying I am stingy, very stingy, and the colour story of volume two is not as sexy to me as volume one or potentially volume three, which got shown last night on Instagram. Go over there if you want to see it. But this is volume two, again, £68. Pounds. So as with volume one, you get 25 shades of eyeshadow and they're numbered and lettered, so it's like A1, to A5, E1 to E5. I like that system. It's really easy to be like, oh, I'm just gonna chuck on E4. Do you know what I mean? Struggle to come up with a name and number there. And it is a pressed pigment palette, or at least some of the shades in it are pressed pigments. I don't know if it, if they all are or not. But yeah, just beware. Some of them can stain your eyes. However, it does mean it is completely vegan and obviously ABH is cruelty free which is fabulous. I'm learning a lot more about cruelty free and I'm getting more interested in it. So as with all of my eyeshadow palette reviews, I am gonna start off by swatching the palette and then I'm gonna do this eye look here on camera for you and then give you my final thoughts at the end. Just a side note, my tutorial or demo is a voiceover. Again, just like my last video, just because of the noise, noisers. <laughs> Noises from the builders outside, they are really testing my patience. Trust me. So I just thought, screw it, I'm just gonna watch a movie, a couple of movies actually, and just do it as a voiceover. So anyway, I think we've done enough faffing around. Whoa, wrong. So I think we've done enough fannying around and without further ado, let's jump into the swatches. I haven't even dipped my brush in or swatched nearly all of the shades. So I'm excited to swatch a few and then we will do the eyes. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now because boy, do I talk. I will swatch down the side of my arm and then I'll do close ups and adjust the lighting so that you can really see them up close and personal. So I'll just go Roll by roll, haven't swatched this one, looking forward to it. And if you've watched my videos before, you know I don't try and like make the swatches look good. I just swatch them as they swatch. So this is A1. Honestly, thought that would swatch better. A2. A3. A4. And A5, B1, this is a matte but it's got a tiny hint of sparkle in it. There's I think two shades like that in the palette. 
B2. It's a really pretty like cornflower blue. B3. B4. Bet this one will swatch nice. B5. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I think I can probably fit one more row on. This shade is gorgeous. C1. C2. This is another matte with a tiny hint of sparkles in it. C3. I knew that would swatch well because when you touch it, it feels so soft. C4. And C5. So there is the first three rows of the palette. I'm just not attracted to this colour story. I can't explain it. I can't really explain it. There's some really pretty shades that I've swatched, but like overall I'm like, that is not very sexy to me. But that's just my opinion. I'm sure everyone will have their own. Why wow, I've really gone squint, I wanna. There we go, there is that. I'm gonna darken the lights, obviously, don't worry. I'm trying to turn my arm so you can see. I've really swatched this quite poorly. There we go, so I've just darkened it one more time, so hopefully you are seeing it a bit better. Again, I've got shaky arms if you are new around here. Shaky body, but shaky arms and hands especially. The shade is really beautiful, and by the way, it applies beautifully. Um, I know these swatches don't look epic, but I don't think they look bad. Moving on to our final two rows. This is D1. This is pretty. I bet this will swatch nice. That is really pretty. It's so much prettier in person because it's got so many like, it's almost dual chrome like blue, like champagne. It's weird. Good weird. D2, holy mackerel, why? D3, gotta love a nice pink eyeshadow. D4, and D5. Straighten you out a bit. Oh no, here's the third, so this is E1. That's a matte with quite a lot, no, just tiny little particles of like sparkle in it. So not completely matte. E2, this one is stunning. I hope it picks up on camera how beautiful it is. E3, E4, E5. There we go. What do you think of them apples? It's too bright, hold on. Okay, there's a wee pinch darker. This shade here is just incredible. Oh, what is it? It's like a light bronzed champagne with pink sparkles and it kind of reflects purpley pink. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. Let me dim you. There you go. You're probably seeing it as true to life as my camera will show you. Now, what do you think? What do you think? Honestly, what do you think? Some really, really pretty shades. Some really good swatch, swatch, swatches, swatches, but some not so good swatches. But yeah, like we've said, we don't only care about swatches. It's how it performs on the eyes. I have only used it once. Twice technically yesterday trying to do a look which didn't succeed but I will say the blues, I used a lot of the blues yesterday and they applied beautifully over a wet base. I think this intro has been more than long enough so now what we're going to do is jump into how I got this eye look here and you can just see how the shadows apply. There's one in particular that I really wasn't that impressed with and you'll see which one that is and then I will give you my final thoughts on the palette but that is volume two, that is what she looks like, that's how it's swatched. And if you want to see how I got this eye look and then hear what I actually think on the palette, then keep watching. 
All right, all right, all right, let's do this. Revlon Candid Concealer, you know me. I can't stop using this as an eyeshadow primer. It's just great if you've got creasy or hooded eyes like I do. I've got a little bit of this all over my face as well, just because, I don't know, I've got a few spots and stuff going on. I want to hide that. I'm not gonna lie. So first shade I'm going in with is C5 on my Crown C528 brush. I like it because it's super pointy and precise. And if you've watched my, vid my videos before, you know I keep my eyes kind of wide open when I apply my kind of first crease shade. Uh, just because I've got kind of slightly hooded eyes. Um, and I'm going to fill in the outer corner. It's a really nice shade. It, it kind of comes off a lot more pink on the skin than it looks in the pan. I like that. Very pigmented as well. But I think as, as we go on, you'll notice I do struggle a little bit to blend it out. Quite a lot to blend it out, actually. So taking my Morphe M506, my favourite brush probably in the world and I'm just, I've not added anything extra to it, I'm just going to blend all over, all around, up and down, in and out, just to help me with my blend because on the other eye when I did it off camera I did struggle to blend this shade out so I'm kind of spending a bit more time on this eye in the hopes that it helps with the next shade that I go in with which yeah, you'll see I do struggle a little bit. So same brush and the shade D3, which is the bright matte pink in the palette. The ones that, I'm, that I've used so far are true mattes. We are gonna use one. Yeah, we're gonna use one that's got like micro shimmer in it, but until, until then, just know all the mattes are pure mattes and the glitter that you can see in my eye, it's just from my brush, annoyingly. So yeah, just going all the way around, around and you know the drill, try and blend it out. I really, really, really struggled, really struggled. It's just such a pigmented first shade that I put on that it was, it was, a, it was tough. And I'm taking that a bit more into the inner corner as well, but not all the way. And then same brush and the shade D2. This is so pigmented, so so pigmented it almost took over the entire look i think you're gonna see that i have a little bit of trouble with the yellow as well and i think it's just because this orange is literally like neon crazy good so i think in a second i'll put it at the front yeah where there's less eyeshadow you can see how bold it is it's one of the most beautiful oranges probably that i've tried but even this, even this doesn't really help me with my blending. So then my JS6 and D4, which is the yellow. I think I moaned about a previous yellow. Is there a yellow in volume one? I can't remember now and I don't want to move and make my chair all squeaky for this voiceover, but I did definitely moan about a yellow recently. Oh no, I think that was from the Mitchell palette. No, I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll fix myself on screen. So I spent ages putting this yellow on. It could be as well because the orange is just so opaque. I was struggling. Or it could be just that this yellow isn't anything to write home about, to be quite honest. So I'm going in and out, in and out, dipping in a lot. But then in a second, when I put it up, like where there's no orange eyeshadow, you can definitely see the yellow a lot better. And I do feel like it showed up on camera more than it actually did in real life. Sorry, it's so out of focus. Yeah, see, just here you can see the yellow a lot better, I think. But it's not, not the best yellow I've ever used. So I'm going to go back in with D3. And because I work dark to light, I need to go back in with my slightly deeper shades and just pop them back on just so that they actually pop. Gotta have a pop and uh, trying to blend out the kind of burgundy that I put on originally. Gosh, it just, it doesn't want to blend. It just, I keep getting my harsh line back. It's probably better if I just patted this shade on. But yeah, Ugh. see that harsh line? It just won't disappear for love nor money.
bit more D2, R2 D2. Don't know why I said that. Don't watch Star Wars. Have done, but don't really. My back got a little jolt of pain there, so I had to sit up in my chair. <laughs> this is kind of helping. And then I'm going to go in with a bit more of the yellow as well. I can't remember what number that was. D4. There you go. Remembered. Hey. On my GS6. Still my like one of my favourite brushes. Not my favourite. That's the M506. But this is a great brush. All in all. Great brush. We'll be buying five of these in January when I'm allowed to buy makeup again. See, I'm giving, giving myself a side eye. Like, come on, Melissa. Blend it. Blend it. Do better. Spent a long time off camera trying to make it better, not gonna lie. Even going back in again with D3. <laughs> I was a bit more gentle when I was blending it this time and you can kind of see it more. I think I was putting a lot less pressure on and I do think it helped a bit, but yeah. Not my best work, but today all in all, this video, <laughs> not my best work, you can probably tell. I was just in a lot of pain, but I really wanted to try and film. Anyway, ABH Eye Primer. I just love this on my hooded crease, creasy eyes because it really sets down quite well on its own. And I'm going in with an A3, not the A3, A3 on the Luxie 245. I'm using it dry. Uh, I just wanted to try, try it dry. Um, it's nice. It's a really, really, really pretty shade. There's no denying it. Do they have a matching glitter that this shade? I don't know. But anyway, it's gorgeous. Very, very pretty. I just had to spend again quite a lot of time picking it up on my brush. It didn't want to pick up on my brush that well. And I don't think it swatched particularly well, but just with a bit of time and effort, even use your finger or use it wet as well. Maybe even a different brush would help. I just like how precise this Luxie brush is. And just putting that all over the cut crease. And then B1, this is one of those shades that is matte but has some micro micro shimmers in it which is frustrating but I didn't mind it for this look but I generally don't like mattes that have micro shimmer. Anyway so I'm trying to blend this outside edge and green neutralises red doesn't it so it was kind of turning a bit muddy and I also didn't really want to blend. It's more my knowledge of colour theory or lack of knowledge that, you know, I could have probably avoided this, but here we are, just adding it on. And then I'm going to use D3 again on my crown brush and just pop that on the outer corner and just try and make my blending a bit better. I just, I definitely struggled 10 times more with this palette than I did with volume one. And I think that's another reason that I don't like seem that excited in this video because I with volume one I was just blown away like blown out of the water by how good it was straight off the bat from the swatches to how it applied whereas this one I struggled more with so a bit more B1 on my Jessup brushes I know a lot of you've bought them on my recommendation they're like Zoeva dupes you get them on Amazon honestly try them you will not be disappointed I bet you you won't So that is the makeup at the moment. It's all right. Again, not my best work, as you can see on my face, but I'm gonna go put on all my base and then we'll come back and do our lower lash line. Yeah, it could be better, Melissa. Do better next time. So you guys know me, you know me. I had to play with the blue, so I'm going in with D5. And we're gonna just do a fully blue lower lash line. I was gonna do green, but I kind of don't like green eyeshadow anymore. And also I kind of have a green on my lid, even though it's like lime, but it's still green. So these applied really well over like a properly set base. So obviously on top I had a wet base, but now it's completely set. And when I used the blues on a wet base, they performed incredibly, even though I didn't like the look I personally came up with. And then same brush, I'm going in with the shade B5, I think it was. And I'm going to put this all the way along the lower lash line. This is such a beautiful shade. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's such like a tropical 
ocean shade or perfect blue sky it's just lovely and it does apply really nicely as well over my set base but I do have to dip in a few more times than I did with the deep shade but I mean you can see it still works really well it's very vibrant very beautiful I would recommend blue the blue zip in general D1 on a little pencil brush it doesn't have a name it's from the Morphe Grandmaster set so yeah it's not got a name but any pencil brush will do and I'm wetting it this is my Boschia, Boscia, Boscia, don't know how you pronounce that, Rose Water Mist. I'm going to put this on the front. I like a lot of shimmer everywhere, so I had to put this on. I do wish I'd gone in with a Palm Beach glitter, because I did get all the glitters as well. But I wanted, I knew a lot of people wouldn't buy the glitters as well as the palette, so I didn't want to kind of use too many products. So, But how gorgeous is this? It's, I mean hark back to the swatch it's just gorgeous oh one of my favorite eyeliners this is the milani stay put eyeliners these do not go anywhere these would survive the apocalypse this is in the shade keep on sapphire the black one is my favorite black eyeliner of all time but this i mean gorgeous like really deep blue oh i love it so much look at it then I'm using C1 for my inner corner. I'm going to wet this as well. This is on my Morphe M321. Although I should have the names of the brushes on screen, I hope. But this is actually such a gorgeous shade. I wish I'd tried this as my like face highlight for the day, but I didn't. I didn't have the balls to in case it wouldn't work. So even though my skin is not looking great, very textured for some reason. But I mean, look at that as an inner corner highlight. Beautiful. Tried to whistle there, it didn't work. Anyway, then I'm going to put on my mascara. This is a wet and wild one. Can't remember the name, but I like the brush. And um, yeah, this is in the makeup. I'm going to go throw on my lips and my lashes. My lashes are the ones I used in my last video, which are Velour Lashes in the style Take It and Go. And that is it. That is my makeup. Done. Sorry my lighting was a bit bright here to actually show it properly but I mean you did see it up close a bit earlier on. Then of course my my modelling shoulder has to come up and annoy everything but yeah that's the look overall. So done my makeup all on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Like I've said, there's some really pretty, pretty unique shades in here, as in pretty and some pretty unique, do you know what I mean? Um, but this palette's just not exciting to me. And I mean, I've already told someone that they can have it, a Patreon. Not because she was a Patreon, just because I know she wanted it. So I was like, yeah, I can have mine. Cause I just, I don't know. There's definitely some lovely shades in here that I really enjoy and that I could see myself reaching for again but for the vast majority of shades in this palette I've already got them and yeah I mean I guess it's the reason she was releasing three because she was like you know not everyone's gonna like each palette so give them options but for me number one is way prettier and more usable for myself and number three potentially i'll need to see it when it arrives tomorrow um in person and see if i'll even touch it because i've got so many palettes already i really don't need any more and whilst this is very pretty and i think a lot of people are really really gonna enjoy it a, a, an epiphany i've had recently is that i really don't like green eyeshadow and so this having so many greens in it, I'm like, mm, I've got blue palettes already. I've got blue blood. I've got plenty pink eyeshadows. Trust me on that. The yellow is nothing to write home about. So it's, you know, this, these two shades up here, D, what was it? A2 and A3, I really, really like, like specifically those two. And I also really like E2, E2 down here is, just very interesting and it's not what you expect when you look in the pan so 
yeah, I mean, it's good. Nothing against the quality. Also, this one really surprised me with how beautiful it was. Nothing bad about it, really. Quite kick uppy. My palette's pretty messy already, and already having dipped my brush in to. Uh, what is it, D1, it's kind of already sealed over a little bit, my wet brush. That happens with metallics though. I'm just like, I'm not that excited about it. And you know when I got number one, I was like, holy smokes, this is stunning. It's the best quality ABH has ever, ever released. Like, you know? And I still feel like this is incredible quality, incredible quality. Like, Norveen is really, I feel, really amped up the pigmentation in her shadows and it's just not for me this is not my volume my volume is number one and potentially number three but number two is not which is probably quite surprising because it is the most colorful one i guess but yeah mm. i will say if you love the color story or if you are one of those people that collects them all then it's definitely worth the money oh is it worth 68 great british pounds that's tough the shadow quality is phenomenal so if you have 68 pounds or whatever dollars it is then yeah get it if the color story is phenomenal for you get it like i said if you collect them all get it but I can easily live without this palette and I plan to. I'm going to put it straight back in its box here and post it off to Linda because she will, I think, enjoy this a lot more than I will and, you know, sharing's caring. Yeah, that's it, that's it for me. That's all my thoughts. Um, let me know what you think. Have you bought it? Are you going to buy it? Can you buy it yet? Yeah, by the time this video goes out, it will have released today, I think. Wait, no, today's... Tuesday. It releases... Released yesterday. So yeah, let me know if you bought it or if you're not gonna. And the reason why and why not. It's getting really late and I've been sitting here for such a long time. So I'm like, energy levels. Boom. So leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Um, I do reply to all my comments. Give the video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And of course, subscribe because we have to hit 50k and we don't have very long until 2020 and I want my posh meal from Hamish. I will see you on either Sunday or Tuesday, hopefully with part three. And on that note, I'm gonna piss off and go to bed and eat pizza in bed. Also a massive thank you to my Patreon site. Thank you guys so much for supporting me on Patreon. Um, I can't, I, I don't know what is wrong with my software unless it's fixed in post-production and then your names will be on the screen right now but if they're not then I can't work out what is going wrong with my software. I think it might be that I just can't put so many names on like one slide or something. I don't know, I honestly spent hours trying to do it for my Mitchell video that we just did but I couldn't work it out but thank you so much for being Patreons and if you want to become one the link's in the description box and you get early access to videos and also Patreon only videos and we do giveaways as well which is fun but that's it for me today. Can I go to bed now? And I really hope that I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!